Hi students, in this video we are discussing the questions from J.E. Main 2024 entrance examinations. These questions are from the chapter Electrochemistry and from the topics Polar Conductance, Equivalent Conductance, Faraday's Laws of Electrolysis and Cold Roche's Law. Question number 1. For a strong electrolyte, a plot of molar conductivity against concentration raised to half is a straight line with a negative slope. The correct unit for the slope is first option is semen centimeter square mole raised to minus 3 by 2 liter raised to 1 by 2. Second option is semen centimeter square mole raised to minus 1 liter raised to 1 by 2. Third option is semen centimeter square mole raised to minus 3 by 2 liter. Fourth option is semen centimeter square mole raised to minus 3 by 2 liter raised to minus 1 by 2. We know according to D by Huckel Onsager equation, lambda m is equal to lambda m infinity minus b root c, where lambda m is a molar conductance and lambda m infinity is a molar conductance at infinite dilution, b is a constant and c is a concentration of the solution. This equation is of the form y is equal to mx plus c, that is the equation for a straight line. Therefore, lambda m versus root c graph is a straight line having slope is equal to minus b. So here we need to find out the unit of b. From d by Huckel equation, we can write b root c is equal to lambda m infinity minus lambda m. That means b root c is equal to molar conductance. So unit of b root c is equal to unit of molar conductance. That is semen centimeter square mole raised to minus 1. So unit of b is equal to unit of molar conductance divided by unit of concentration raised to half. So unit of B is equal to semen centimeter square mole raised to minus 3 by 2 liter raised to 1 by 2. So here the answer is option number 1. Now question number 2. Molar ionic conductivities of divalent cation and anion are 57 semen centimeter square mole raised to minus 1 and 73 semen centimeter square mole raised to minus 1 respectively. The molar conductivity of solution of an electrolyte with the above cation and anion will be Option number 1 is 65 semen centimeter square mole raised to minus 1 Option number 2 130 semen centimeter square mole raised to minus 1 Option number 3 187 semen centimeter square mole raised to minus 1 and option number 4 is 260 semen centimeter square mole raised to minus 1. According to Caldrosch's law, molar conductance at infinite dilution of a solution is equal to sum of the molar conductances of the cations and anions present in the solution. That is, lambda m of solution is equal to lambda m of cation plus lambda m of anion. Here, lambda m of cation is equal to 57 semen centimeter square mole raised to minus 1 and that of anion is equal to 73 semen centimeter square mole raised to minus 1. So lambda m of solution is equal to 57 plus 73 that is equal to 130 semen centimeter square mole raised to minus 1. So here the answer is option number 2. Then question number 3. The molar conductivity for electrolytes A and B are plotted against square root of concentration as shown below. Electrolytes A and B respectively are. Listen here, in this question, a graph plotted between molar conductance lambda m and the square root of concentration root c is given. The graph consists of two lines, a straight line and a curved line. The curved line is represented by capital A and the straight line is represented by capital B. We need to identify which curve represents the variation of lambda m for strong electrolyte and which one represents for weak electrolytes. As we know for a strong electrolyte, variation of lambda m with concentration obeys D by Huckel Onsager equation which is lambda m is equal to lambda m infinity minus b root c. You know this equation is of the form y is equal to mx plus c. That means Lambda M versus root C graph is a straight line for a strong electrolyte. But in the case of a weak electrolyte, 
variation of lambda m with concentration does not obey d by huckel on sagar equation therefore lambda m versus root c graph is not a straight line for weak electrolytes so in this question the curved line a represents the variation of molar conductance with concentration for weak electrolytes and the straight line b represents that for strong electrolytes so here the answer is option number 3 Now question number 4 the amount of electricity in coulomb required for oxidation of 1 mole of h2o to o2 is dash into 10 raised to 5 coulombs the equation for the oxidation of 1 mole of h2o is h2o gives half mole o2 plus 2 moles of h plus plus 2 moles of electrons that means the number of moles of electrons involved during the oxidation of 1 mole of h2o is equal to 2 So the quantity of electricity in coulombs required for oxidation of 1 mole of H2O is equal to n into F, where n is the number of moles of electrons, and F is called Faraday's constant. Faraday's constant is the quantity of electricity associated with 1 mole of electrons, which is equal to 96500 coulombs. So here the quantity of electricity required is equal to 2 into 96500 coulomb, that is equal to 193000 coulomb, that is equal to 1.93 into 10 raised to 5 coulombs that is approximately equal to 2 into 10 raised to 5 coulombs so here the answer is 2 now question number 5 the mass of silver in bracket atomic mass is equal to 108 g per mole displaced by a quantity of electricity which displaces 5600 ml of o2 at stp will be dash graph listen in this question the volume of oxygen gas displaced at stp is given which is equal to 5600 ml we know at stp 22400 ml oxygen gas is equal to 32 g therefore mass of 5600 ml oxygen is equal to 5600 divided by 22400 into 32 that is equal to 8 g that means the mass of oxygen gas displaced is equal to 8 g Then according to Faraday's second law of electrolysis, W1 by W2 is equal to E1 by E2. That means the ratio of weights of two substances deposited when same quantity of electricity is passed through different electrolytes is equal to the ratio of their equivalent weights. Here W1 is a mass of silver deposited that we need to find out. W2 is a mass of oxygen displaced that is equal to 8 gram. E1 is equivalent to mass of silver which is equal to 108 and E2 is equivalent to mass of oxygen that is equal to 8 then substituting these values the mass of silver deposited is equal to 108 g so here the answer is 108 now question number 6 a constant current was passed through a solution of AuCl4 minus ion between gold electrodes After a period of 10 minutes the increase in mass of cathode was 1.314 g the total charge passed through the solution is dash into 10 raised to minus 2 f given atomic mass of gold is equal to 197 listen here according to faraday's first law of electrolysis the mass of substance deposited at an electrode w is equal to e by f into q where e is equivalent to mass of substance f is faraday's constant which is equal to 96500 coulomb and the q is a quantity of electricity in coulombs passed through the electrolyte here the mass of gold deposited is given that is equal to 1.314 which is equal to equivalent to mass of gold that is 197 divided by 3 where 3 is a change in oxidation number or n factor divided by faraday f into q Q is a quantity of electricity that we need to find out. The quantity of electricity Q is equal to 1.314 divided by 197 by 3 into F. That is equal to 2 into 10 raised to minus 2 Faraday. So here the answer is 2. Then question number 7. The mass of zinc produced by the electrolysis of zinc sulfate solution with a steady current of 0.015 ampere for 15 minutes is dash into 10 raised to minus 4 g given that atomic mass of zinc is equal to 65.4 amu according to faraday's first law of electrolysis 
the mass of substance deposited during electrolysis W is equal to E by F into I into T. E is the equivalent mass of substance deposited. F is Faraday's constant that is equal to 96500 coulomb. I is a current in ampere and T is a time in seconds. The equivalent mass of sink is equal to its atomic mass divided by N factor. Atomic mass of sink is 65.4 divided by N factor is 2. The current in ampere is given that is 0 0.015 ampere. The time is given as 15 minutes therefore T is equal to 15 into 60 seconds. Substituting these values we will get the mass of sink deposited which is equal to 45.75 into 10 raised to minus 4 gram which is approximately equal to 46 into 10 raised to minus 4 gram. So here the answer is 46. Then question number 8. 0 0.05 centimeter thick coating of silver is deposited on a plate of 0 0.05 meter square area. The number of silver atoms deposited on the plate are dash into 10 raised to 23. Given that atomic mass of silver is equal to 108 and the density of silver is equal to 7.9 gram per centimeter cube. Listen here in this question. A silver coating having thickness 0 0.05 centimeter is deposited on a plate having area 0 0.05 meter square. We need to calculate the number of silver atoms deposited on the plate. First of all, we can calculate the volume of silver coating which is equal to small a into small l where small a represents area of silver coating and small l represents thickness of silver coating. Area of silver coating is given as 0 0.05 meter square which is equal to 0 0.05 into 100 square centimeter square and the thickness of silver coating is given as 0 0.05 centimeter therefore volume of silver coating is equal to 25 centimeter cube. Now we can calculate mass of silver deposited that is equal to volume of silver deposited into density of silver. Density of silver is given as 7.9 therefore mass of silver deposit is equal to 25 into 7.9 gram. The number of moles of silver atoms deposited is equal to mass of silver deposited divided by atomic mass that is 25 into 7.9 divided by atomic mass of silver which is 108. Now we can calculate number of silver atoms deposited that is equal to number of moles into Avogadro's number which is equal to 11.01 into 10 raised to 23. So here the answer is 11. Then question number 9. The values of conductivity of some materials at 298.15 Kelvin in semen meter square are 2.1 into 10 raised to 3, 1 into 10 raised to minus 16, 1.2 into 10, 3.91, 1.5 into 10 raised to minus 2, 1 into 10 raised to minus 7, and 1 into 10 raised to 3. The number of conductors among these materials is dash. In this question, the conductivity of some materials at 298 Kelvin are given. We need to find out the number of conductors among these materials. This is a direct question. This question is based on the conductivity chart given in the NCRT textbook. From this chart, we can clearly understand that the materials having conductivities 2.1 into 10 raised to 3, 1.2 into 10, 3.91 and 1 into 10 raised to 3 are conductors. And the material having conductivity 1 into 10 raised to minus 16 is insulator and those having conductivities 1.5 into 10 raised to minus 2, 1 into 10 raised to minus 7 are semiconductors. So here the answer is 4. That is 4 materials are conductors, only 1 material is insulator and 2 materials are semiconductors. Then question number 10. Identify the factor from the following that does not affect electrolytic conductance of a solution. Option number 1, the nature of the electrolyte added. Option number 2, the nature of electrode used. Option number 3, concentration of the electrolyte. And option number 4, nature of the solvent used. Listen, among the options given, the factors affecting electrolytic conductance of solution are nature of electrolyte, concentration of electrolyte, and nature of solvent used. Here, nature of electrode is not a factor. So, here the answer is option number 2. 
Then question number 11. One farad of electricity liberates x into 10 raised to minus 1 gram atom of copper from copper sulfate solution. Then x is dash. We know for the deposition of one mole of copper, two moles of electrons are required. The quantity of electricity associated with two moles of electrons is equal to two faraday. So one faraday of electricity can deposit only 0.5 mole of copper. 0.5 mole of copper is equal to 0.5 gram atom of copper, which is equal to 5 into 10 raised to minus 1 gram atom. So here the value of x is equal to 5.